Hello, medical students. Today, we'll delve into the captivating field of gastroenterology, with a focus on short bowel syndrome, SBS. SBS occurs when a substantial part of the small intestine is missing or dysfunctional, resulting in nutrient absorption issues and digestive complexities. Our discussion will encompass the mechanisms of intestinal adaptation, innovative treatment options, and future research directions. In this first topic, we will immerse ourselves in the intricate physiological processes by which the remaining intestine adapts to compensate for the loss of functional small bowel in SBS patients. We will explore the mechanisms that enable the intestine to increase its absorptive surface area, enhance nutrient absorption, and optimize digestive functions. Additionally, we will examine the role of hormones, growth factors, and enterocytes in promoting intestinal adaptation in SBS patients. Moving forward, we will turn our attention to the principles and practical considerations involved in providing parenteral nutrition support to individuals with SBS. Parenteral nutrition plays a crucial role in ensuring adequate nutrient intake and preventing malnutrition in patients with compromised intestinal function. We will discuss the components and composition of parenteral nutrition solutions, the techniques for administration, monitoring for complications, and the challenges associated with long-term dependence on parenteral nutrition. In Topic 3, we will delve into the various surgical approaches used to lengthen the small bowel and increase the absorptive surface area in SBS patients. We will explore the intricacies of surgical procedures such as serial transverse enteroplasty, STEP, bowel tapering, and autologous intestinal reconstruction, highlighting the benefits, limitations, and potential complications associated with each technique. Shifting our focus, Topic 4 will revolve around the intriguing concept of intestinal transplantation as a treatment option for SBS. We will delve into the indications for transplantation, patient selection criteria, surgical techniques, and the outcomes and challenges associated with this complex procedure. Furthermore, we will discuss the immunosuppressive regimens and long-term management required for successful intestinal transplantation. Now, let us investigate the pathogenesis, diagnostic evaluation, and management of intestinal failure associated liver disease, IFALD, a common complication in SBS patients. We will discuss the mechanisms linking SBS, intestinal dysbiosis, parenteral nutrition, and liver dysfunction. Additionally, we will explore strategies to mitigate the risk of developing IFALD, including proper nutritional support, the use of hepatoprotective agents, and the potential role of novel therapies. In Topic 6, we will explore the diverse range of pharmacological interventions used to address specific complications in SBS patients. We will examine the management of complications such as diarrhea, malabsorption, bacterial overgrowth, and electrolyte imbalances through the use of medications such as antimotility agents, proton pump inhibitors, antimicrobial agents, and nutritional supplements. We will analyze the mechanisms of action, dosing regimens, and potential side effects of these pharmacotherapies. Next, let us delve into the fascinating and rapidly evolving field of the gut microbiota and its influence on the pathophysiology and clinical outcomes of SBS. We will investigate the alterations in gut microbial composition in SBS patients and the potential implications for nutrient metabolism, immune function, and intestinal barrier integrity. Furthermore, we will explore strategies aimed at manipulating the gut microbiota, such as probiotics, prebiotics, fecal microbiota transplantation, and the use of microbial-based therapies. In Topic 8, we will shift our focus to the optimization of nutrient absorption in SBS patients through dietary modifications and enteral nutrition approaches. We will discuss the formulation of specialized enteral feeds, the role of specific nutrients, such as medium-chain triglycerides and glutamine, and the importance of adaptive dietary strategies. Moreover, we will emphasize the multidisciplinary approach required to tailor nutritional interventions to individual patient needs. Fluid and electrolyte imbalances in SBS patients require careful assessment and management. We will discuss methods for assessing and treating these disturbances, including fluid resuscitation, oral rehydration, intravenous fluids, and monitoring electrolyte levels. We will also address specific electrolyte abnormalities. Moving forward, we will unravel the diagnostic methods and therapeutic approaches for bacterial overgrowth, a frequently encountered complication in SBS patients. We will explore the role of breath tests, culture-based techniques, and molecular diagnostic tools in identifying bacterial overgrowth. Furthermore, we will discuss the use of antibiotics, dietary modifications, prokinetic agents, and potential future treatment modalities targeting the gut microbiota for the management of bacterial overgrowth. In this penultimate topic, we will critically evaluate the potential long-term complications following SBS, such as intestinal failure-associated complications, altered bone metabolism, and central line-associated bloodstream infections. 
We will discuss the impact of these complications on the quality of life for individuals living with SBS. Furthermore, we will explore strategies for minimizing long-term complications, optimizing functional outcomes, and enhancing the overall quality of life for SBS survivors. As we approach the conclusion of our script, Topic 12 will focus on the exciting realm of emerging therapies and future directions in the treatment of SBS. We will stay updated on the latest advances in therapeutic approaches, including tissue engineering, bioartificial intestines, gut transplantation, and novel drug therapies. We will explore their potential to revolutionize the management of SBS and offer hope for improved patient outcomes. In conclusion, we have delved into the complexities of short bowel syndrome, covering various aspects from physiological mechanisms to treatment options. This knowledge will equip you to provide comprehensive care to patients, emphasizing the importance of curiosity, open-mindedness, and compassion in gastroenterology.